Welcome back. So today we figured we would do a early June tour of the garden so you could see how things are going. Every year we have something new to learn and there's always a plant that doesn't seem to be doing as well as I would like. Being that it's our first year growing food in Alaska, I think we are gonna have a little bit of a learning curve, but so far most of the things are going well. I was going to go over some of the stuff that's not going well first. I noticed this season that some of our plants prior to transplanting and after transplanting started to develop like a purple tinge on the edge of their leaves. And I've never had this happen before in Oregon. I looked it up and I think it's a phosphorus deficiency, but I wanted to ask you guys so you can tell me what you think. I'm gonna have Eric show you some examples. It was mainly our herbs and flowers that started to get this purple on it. This is a healthy spearmint plant and right next to it, I have one that doesn't look as good and I'll give you guys a better example. Even though this is a chocolate mint variety and it's supposed to be a little darker, it's not supposed to be this dark. This has a lot of purple on the leaves and the growth does seem a little bit stunted as well. So from my research, that could be due to a few different things. I think the most common cause of it is cold, wet soils and we've had lots of rain. I think it's a little bit unusual for Alaska how much rain we've had in May and June. And I am monitoring the soil temperature. It does seem to be 60 to 70 and some days even warmer. So I'm not sure if that's quite the issue. Now I haven't just added any phosphorus because I don't want to add anything to the soil I don't actually know it's deficient in. Also sometimes it's not that your soil is deficient, it's just that the plant can't access the nutrients it needs. So let me know what you guys think. So out of everything we had shipped to us, there was one thing that did not work out that well. If you remember in this row, I planted probably 70 to 75 strawberry crowns. And out of all of those, I think two survived. So what probably happened is they were shipped to us early, which is pretty common for the lower United States to get strawberries early in the season. And I just didn't keep them dormant and alive until they were ready to plant. We did go ahead and purchase some more. You can tell there's some big strawberry plants. And then we also purchased some crowns and these are ever bearing strawberries that do well in Alaska. We both just agreed we were going to be impatient with strawberries. They send off runners so with one strawberry plant you'll get more over the years. But we really want to get a patch established pretty fast here. So another thing that didn't go as planned this year is our very young spinach is bolting. And what that means is it is already trying to set seed when it's not very big. Now this most likely happened because the seeds, you know, I started these back in the house earlier in the spring. They've been in the greenhouse and they have also been outside. So there's been a lot of temperature fluctuation and they can be pretty sensitive to heat, even super cold temperatures and the daylight. And we're at like 19 and a half hours of sunlight. That is something I was a little bit pre-concerned about gardening here in Alaska is if we're going to be able to do some of those greens that are a little more sensitive to the daylight and the hot temperatures. So with that being said, I did plant some more spinach in between these rows and I've also planted spinach and a few other greens that do bolt quickly in other shady areas of the garden. My hope is to be able to harvest those middle of the season even though they don't really like that time of the year. So over at our herb bed, I have a few plants that we did purchase as starts, but most of them are from seed. And when we started these all in the cabin months ago, I failed to separate them out soon enough. So we ended up doing that separation when we planted them. And I think that probably wasn't that ideal of a situation on their roots. A lot of them are pretty small and not growing the quickest. They are doing okay. So the issue with that is that they won't overwinter here. Normally with herbs, they get bigger and stronger every year. They last for many years. And because they're not gonna last here, I really would have wanted them to have some vigorous growth the first year. And I know I'm probably not gonna get that. I'm gonna have a different game plan next year. And lastly, our beets have failed to germinate. And I don't think that's an issue with the seeds. In fact, the seeds that we use this year, I was using Denali Seed Co. and MI Gardener, which are both new seeds to me. They germinated wonderful just as well as Territorial. And I also used a few other companies. Those had no problems either. What I think happened is this bed was one that got watered a lot. And I think I overwatered it because I haven't had any issues with this soil and germination in any of the other beds. There's some beds that were further on the other side of the garden that we can't reach with our hose. 
and those germinated fine and I think it's actually because I watered them less. I went ahead and planted more beets and I hope that everything goes well with that. Never had that issue in the past and I'm really hoping that we get beets this year because that is a main staple for us. Now that we covered that, I'm going to prance around, show you the rest of the garden and we can forget that any of that exists. You can see here we have a asparagus spear sprouting. In fact, all of the asparagus crowns are sprouted. They are pretty thin looking and I think that's pretty typical. It's their first year. We probably won't be harvesting these for another three years, but all of them made it and they're all going. This is a lilac plant that we planted a few weeks ago and it's looking really good. It's already put on quite a bit of new growth. With all the recent rain, it did get a little bit of blight, but I trimmed that off and the rest of the plant looks really good. So this bed back here is primarily flowers and our berry bushes. Things are going really good in this bed. I had some extra room to cram in some more little plants that I had extras of. And I mainly did that because they're not perennials, so they'll be able to grow this year while the berry bushes are establishing themselves. We've got marigolds. I've got sunflowers and nasturtiums and echinacea. The raspberries are looking good. This is one of the honey berries. This is our rose bush over here. It's put on a lot of growth. It looks really good. I did just notice the other day that there are aphids on the growing points. I'll probably need to do something about that if I want it to keep looking this good. This season so far, we've seen beetles, I've seen ants, grasshoppers, hoverflies, ladybugs, and I have even seen a few root maggots, which are flies that will lay their larvae in the soil. And a lot of the beetles or ants and spiders, I'm not really concerned about. Those are generally good bugs. Um, as far as like flea beetles, which are those really tiny ones that jump, or even aphids and slugs, they can get pretty out of control if you have them really bad. Our line of defense for that is to focus on our soil health, which in turn creates healthy, strong plants. Generally, pests stay away from plants that are doing really well. Again, that's not always true because there are aphids on this rose bush, which looks really healthy. In this bed, I primarily have flowers. I've got sunflowers, borage, catnip, and comfrey. So we have three different varieties of sunflowers. I believe a gray stripe, a velvet queen, and mammoth, which gets really big. At the end of the strawberry row, I have some turnips and dill growing. And next to us, we've got carrots and radishes. The radishes are germinating great. There were a few varieties that germinated faster than others, so I went ahead and sowed some more in here. Our pea trellis is snow peas and snap peas. We have a purple variety that I absolutely love and it grows about seven feet tall, so it should make it to the top this year. Quite a bit of this row is devoted to carrots and they are germinating really well. I'm excited about that. They take a little bit longer to germinate and the soil that we got this year has a little more rocks in it and it also has a little more sand in it than I'm typically used to, but it does seem like it's doing well for the most part. We have a few different varieties of carrots we're growing. They include rainbow, yellow, purple, and I also have a few orange varieties growing as well. This is our potato row. We have a whole row of potatoes. I think we're gonna get quite a bit at the end of the year. I'm hopeful of that. The variety I just showed you is mountain row. So it does have a little more of a purple leaf, but these are the other varieties that have the green leaf. Every single seed potato we brought sprouted, so I'm really happy about that. I don't know if you remember when we planted them, but they had really long sprouts already. At the end of this bed, I have some cabbage and cauliflower growing, and then we go into our greens for the rest of it. We've got iceberg lettuce. I have a few butterhead blends. This is a mustard spinach, which is delicious. It gets really, really big. This is baby bok choy. Two different varieties of mustard greens and one of my personal favorites, which is mountain spinach or auric. We have romaines growing. This is Merlot, a loose leaf lettuce. And next we have arugula. These are wild mustard. So just an assortment of mustards. 
This is a very pretty little frilly mustard leaf. We also have endive, Italian dandelion greens. I have two different kinds of sorrel over here. One's a red veined sorrel, and this is just, I think, the traditional. This is a scarlet cabbage that I have grown for about three years and never successfully gotten ahead. It usually ends up bolting, and also, if you could tell, that bugs love this plant. For some reason, they just go for it. The reason we planted some of these greens so close together is because we're going to harvest them in a little bit of a different fashion. It's kind of like high intensity gardening where not everything gets to its mature size and you come along and just take some of the young greens. These two rows seem to be taking off the fastest and are doing really well. In fact, some of this kale is getting very close to being ready to eat. We've got a red ribbed Toscana kale. These are wild kales, collards, Swiss chard, fennels, and they're starting to form their little bulbs. This is our celery, taking its sweet time. In fact, celery is very finicky to grow, takes a long time, and needs quite a bit of fertilizer, so I'm not even sure why I grow it. These are kohlrabis, and they are starting to form their bulbs. This is another Toscana or dino kale. And we have several different broccolis growing, including a purple variety. One of these is Romanesco. I'm not sure if it's this one. We've got a bunch of cauliflowers. This one has a huge leaf on it. We have purple varieties of cauliflower growing as well. And Brussels sprouts. We have purple and green growing. This is a red jewel cabbage, I believe. We've got a few other kinds, including a green variety at the end. This whole row is leeks. I've got scallions, shallots, and onions at the end. So far, these seem to be doing pretty good. This is a red variety, I believe. And onions, I want them to grow really fast here, especially because of our light. They're long day onions, so they should do well here. But I just want them to put on a lot of that growth before they start to bulb. So for the last part of the tour, I'm gonna to show you inside the high tunnel. We are so fortunate and happy to have that this year. Everything in here has been really taken off and doing great, regardless of the cooler temps outside. So with this recent sun we've been getting, we are probably going to need to be putting on our shade cloth soon. I've been able to keep it anywhere from 80 to 85 during here in the day with some of the methods we have to cool the greenhouse down, but it does drop down into the 50s at night. We've got a variety of peppers here. This particular one is Nikita. They all seem to be doing pretty good regardless of their leggy start inside the cabin. They're really small, but they have bushed out quite a bit. So I'm hoping we get some peppers this year. We are in Alaska and I'm hoping this goes well. We are growing corn and we have a white variety and we also have a yellow variety. It's Inferno and I would recommend it. It grows so well. It's fast. It always germinates and the corn is incredible from it. These are our tomatillos. They're doing pretty well. And we have four eggplants. They are already starting to set flowers. These are our basils. I have purple opal and mammoth. Mammoth is known for its huge sweet leaves and it's one of my favorite basils to grow. At the back we have zucchinis with plenty of room to send off their vines. So the beans that we planted are all germinating well. We've got green beans and shelling beans. So this is where our squash and watermelon is. I have watermelon down here and they germinated and are doing pretty well so far. Next we have butternut squash and we also have acorn spaghetti, delicata, and pumpkin growing in this row. We've got more peppers over here. I think those are jalapenos and serranos. This is pineapple sage. These are our cucumbers over here. We have three different varieties, lemon slicing and a pickling variety. I have dill up front that seems to be liking the greenhouse temperatures. These are our tomatoes. They are doing wonderful. Yesterday I went ahead and tightened their strings as well as added some more soil to the base of them so they can send out some more roots. This is hillbilly. We have Kellogg's next to that. This is stupice, which is an early tomato, a cherry tomato, 
And lastly, our paste tomato, which is San Marzano. So with this heat, we have been running either one or two fans in here, and it doesn't seem to be too taxing on our solar system. In fact, it's working out great. So the electric fence has been working wonderful. The solar panel has been keeping the batteries charged and we haven't had any issues with anything coming inside. We've seen a few hairs, but they haven't gotten in. No moose have come in and we actually haven't had any issues with birds. So be sure to keep your eye out for our late June garden tour and we will catch you guys next time.